All of you that clicked on this video are probably thinking that I'm just another one of those Assassin's Creed fanboys who is going to rant about Assassin's Creed Valhalla being a bad game because there's no stealth, there's no connection to prior games, and it just doesn't fit that old formula. Well, let me tell you, when I first bought the game, I was excited as all hell. I didn't enjoy Assassin's Creed Odyssey at all, didn't really get into Origins, didn't like Syndicate, but I did like Unity after I recently replayed the game last year. Still a little bit buggy, but still a good game overall. So when I played Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Valhalla. I actually enjoyed the game a lot. I'll put on two thumbnails on screen now. I made two videos which I now deleted because they didn't really reflect my new opinion on the game now where I said it was the savior of the franchise after playing around 30 hours of it and then after I finished it I made a 35 minute video on the game which you can check my channel there's no video that long except um one of my Max Payne videos. So I made a big video on this game and I love the game. I thought it brought back everything that was good about Assassin's Creed. The stealth, the parkour, the vibe of the game and well I tried replaying it about a year after that point and well didn't really enjoy it so I just want to talk about here why I think the game is atrocious and I think a lot of people in the community do agree so that's why everyone was cautious about Assassin's Creed Mirage and all the other games that were announced at the Assassin's Creed showcase. In this video I'm just going to talk about the gameplay, the story and then the cynical monetization of which another YouTuber has already made a video about so I'm just going to delve into it a little bit but not really the main point of this video so let's get into it. So first let's talk about the gameplay. So I'm going to take off my Assassin's Creed OG fanboy lens and talk about the game in just a video game sense. Is the gameplay good? But first, I guess we do have to talk about the name that it inherits. This is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's not a Viking game. It's not called Valhalla. So despite the fact that the gameplay revolves around this berserker type of killing enemies with your axe and whatnot type of gameplay, it still is an Assassin's Creed game, which is why you do get a hidden blade at the start of the game from Basim and you still do have a cloak. However, the way that this cloak and this hidden blade works is probably the worst in the entire series bar Assassin's Creed Odyssey because that game is set before Origins so it can't really it wouldn't really make sense for it to have a hidden blade anyway but anyway let's talk about the stealth so first I'm gonna talk about the social stealth so in other Assassin's Creed games like Assassin's Creed Unity Assassin's Creed 2 the old games of course there was social stealth where you could put on a cloak walk into the city as an assassin you don't want anyone to detect you so you'd sit down on benches or you'd go into a crowd try to disguise yourself in this game I thought that feature was back and I used it once throughout the whole game and the part that I used it on was where it was compulsory because any other part where you try to use social stealth it either doesn't work properly like it did in the other games or it's just useless in the scenarios that you're in because there's too many enemies for you to even use social stealth properly so what's the point of using it? It's not like where enemies were scattered around before with two, three enemies that way. There can be like four or five guards talking to each other. If you're using social stealth you're not going to get out of that scenario and the stealth in the game as well it's there. It's definitely there. I used it so much in the game so I'm not going to complain about it not having stealth. The problem is that the game isn't designed around stealth like it used to be. Assassin's Creed is supposed to be a stealth game. There's different gadgets for that like in Unity with the poison blade and stuff but it's a stealth oriented game. You jump onto enemies, you air assassinate, you go behind enemies with your cloak, through a bush, you jump into haystacks, you do all that stuff. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla it's not built around stealth. There's no mission. When you're raiding an enemy base you can't go into there and try to do stealth. I've tried a couple of times, many times actually, trying to go into an enemy base and try to do something thing with stealth but whenever I try to do it they either detect you too fast or it just isn't viable in that scenario and that's really disappointing because the game does have stealth but it just isn't designed around it so you can't really utilize it that much which is really disappointing and the gameplay like the general gameplay okay it's viking gameplay a bit similar to the rpg style of odyssey except that enemies die a bit faster and there's less emphasis on the leveling system in this game although there is still skills and stuff the fact that you can wield thor's hammer or odin's spear in an assassin's creed video game is a bit absurd and I have gameplay on it right here where it's just I don't know what's going on here and the fact that you do all these trials to get these weapons in an Assassin's Creed game what's the point of using stealth when you've got something like this and the gameplay I'm gonna be real the gameplay is kind of fun at so sometimes it can be fun because it's just messing around it's just fun however it's not Assassin's Creed gameplay and doesn't have anything to do with Assassin's Creed so don't think Valhalla is a good Assassin's Creed game but the gameplay does have flaws like the open world is just boring as all hell all the environments I just feel copy pasted none of them actually feel unique like they did in the other games and the people within those cities aren't enjoyable to talk to or you can't really even interact with them side quests are absolutely horrendous and there's not much redeeming qualities about the open world other than the fact that it just looks pretty and that's pretty much wraps up my thoughts about the gameplay in a quick few minutes or so I don't want to ramble too on because I can go a long time talking about the gameplay in this game now let's touch on the story of the game firstly I'm gonna say some good stuff about the story because the opening of 
this game where the title drop happens and where all of the music comes in at the right time when you're leaving Norway is one of the greatest Assassin's Creed openings ever I think and it really drives in that feeling of adventure and I really enjoyed the opening and some moments in the story the story does have some highlights one thing I really do like is the brotherhood that's built between Sigurd and Eivor they do really have this bond with each other and seeing it get developed over the course of the story and then seeing Sigurd lose it all after 4k manipulates him to an absolute tomato is pretty cool to see however the stuff like Odin being Eivor and all these god complexes with the characters is really annoying because this isn't a mythical game it's not supposed to be it's an Assassin's Creed game which I don't really want to delve into because of course other people have already addressed the fact that Valhalla isn't a good Assassin's Creed game either in name gameplay or story but that doesn't mean that the story can be something great however the story here just isn't great the way that the characters develop make it so you don't really care about any of them Eivor isn't a great protagonist he does have some strong moments but that is all overshadowed by this god complex that he has he doesn't really get to get developed himself while this struggle within him with Odin and all of that overshadows his actual development as well as Sigurd who's gone for half the story while being one of the main characters in the story and then Basim who seemed really interesting and he's going to be the protagonist of an entirely new game for the franchise but even though that the story is 70 hours long there was not enough interactions between Eivor, Sigurd and Basim for you to get connected to these characters and the way that they just develop the characters by themselves just isn't enough to make them relatable as well as this is the actual people within the region such as the kings and all of these people they're not developed to how they're supposed to be every region that you go to none of the people there are memorable and that's really really depressing there was one character which I can't name off the top of my head put an editor's note here which was kind of interesting and the death of that character did mean something impactful for the story but it wasn't enough to truly connect the audience to the characters which many video games can do and I think the fact that the game is so long should have given it time to develop all of these characters as much as they needed we could have had a really fleshed out Viking story in England but instead the game falls flat because it doesn't focus on that component of the game which is really depressing because there is a lot of potential within the world of Assassin's Creed Valhalla which really was untapped for the majority of the game except the few good moments sprinkled in there. Now let's talk about the animus stuff and I don't think anyone in the entire Assassin's Creed community liked the modern day stuff in this game. It was absolutely confusing I can't even name half of the stuff off the top of my head but just thinking about it really really bumbles me to the point where I don't understand why they even included it into the game. I know it's an Assassin's Creed game but you're taking Vikings and gods anyway might as well take out the modern day stuff but the game tried to connect it by having the same animus character that they did in Assassin's Creed Origins and Assassin's Creed Odyssey but we weren't already connected to that character so bringing that character into another game which isn't that great isn't going to do anything for anyone and I really wish that the modern day stuff was as good as it was with Desmond and stuff and maybe that's just some bias kicking in there but at least there I cared about the characters somewhat where here they don't really matter to me at all. This section is going to be kept quite brief because there's already extensive videos online discussing this in-depth monetization of Assassin's Creed and I'll put a video like that on the screen now and in the description for you to check out because I'm not really going to analyze it in depth like many other people have. What I do want to discuss is that this monetization is still within the game however compared to Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey where the game basically forced you to use a level booster to play the game properly that isn't here. I was able to play Valhalla with no problems with trying to do side quests because I couldn't do a mission. Even though some parts of the map I was quite under leveled, I was still able to do it with relative ease because the level gap didn't mean that the enemies had 500 billion thousand health like they did in Odyssey and instead they still do feel grounded even when they are higher level than you. You just got to learn how to dodge more and fight better. However, there still is monetization within the game and although it is mostly cosmetic, it still isn't something that should be in a video game, especially one that you paid over $70 for, for me, for example, who pre ordered the game on day one. The monetization of Assassin's Creed Valhalla is cosmetic where you could buy different armor sets such as the Iron Man one that someone made a video about and although I don't really care that all this futuristic and supernatural stuff is being added into the game as cosmetics it doesn't really bug me because I think anyone should be able to access the game and play the game exactly like they want even though it is supposed to be an Assassin's Creed game but that doesn't mean that the cosmetics should be monetized. Other games that do it are free to play games which are allowed to do it because that's the only way they are able to make their money to make profit on the games running and all the stuff that the developers have to do in order to make the game and operate the game. Ubisoft is a big company so there's no need to do stuff like this however of course it is making them a lot of money as some reports have shown the Assassin's Creed monetization has given them some of the greatest funds that they've ever seen in their history in the gaming market so it's not going to stop.
stop. But the fact that you have to pay for certain weapons, certain gear, certain armor is ridiculous. Because some of these weapons, I saw one in the shop, which I actually did purchase with the points that the game gives you automatically, is hell of a lot better than a lot of the weapons in the game. And the fact that you have to purchase and utilize real life money to buy these particular items is ridiculous. And I think customization is a big part of many video games. And it's the reason why a lot of people do play video games. Although I don't really care about customization as a lot of people do, I still think that customization should be a core part of a game like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but it shouldn't be in expenses and especially not weapons and gear in the game that can make you better than anyone else that's playing the game. Makes it a little bit pay to win in that scenario, making it a lot easier to play when you just purchase things. However, a lot of the monetization has gone down, but there still is a lot of cynical business practices being done within Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which really does bring the game's overall integrity and reputation down within the gaming market. That pretty much wraps up this video. I've usually made good videos on games, meaning that I always talk about games in a positive light. However, I did want to mix it up a little bit. And a game that I did change my opinion about several times on this channel as well is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where even in my review of the game a couple months ago, I said to buy the game, which has completely changed by this point. And I do speak about some negatives in that review. However, here I did want to elaborate on that point and say why the game is atrocious, to be honest. Anyway, that's all from me for today's video. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.